Hey guys and girls, today is going to be an interesting day because we are going to hunt for gold. Okay, I don't know where's the latest gold rush, you know, maybe you can tell me. Maybe somewhere in San Francisco and I really want to go over there. We want to prepare for our journey to, you know, go up to the mountains or go to the caves to hunt this thing called gold because I'm sure we all want to get paid, right? We all want to get paid. But certainly, uh, jokes aside, okay, this is a double integral problem faced in a nice way. So I hope you all, you know, enjoy me in that. Okay, so here's the objective. Now, we got a certain map, right? And let's just say the map is given over here like this, okay? And our boss tells us that there's a goal somewhere hidden in this region over here, the region that is defined or bounded by these lines and these curves over here. This is the region that we want to explore. Um, formally speaking, the region that bounded between the curve y equals to x squared, y equals to half and y equals to minus x plus 2. But here's the problem, okay? We got a certain function, a function of x and y, okay? Which gives us the elevation above sea level. And obviously, that now that we're going to hunt for gold, we need to get the proper equipment. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, we need a crane if we're going down to the caves, or we need some ropes, you know, if we're going from the mountains. How is this going to help us? Well, if we have the function, we can tell whether most of our elevation will be on the mountains or in the caves, and then get the proper equipment so that we can hunt the gold. So, you know, mathematically speaking, what we want to do is that we want to evaluate the function x and y, function of x and y, in this case, is x times y squared integrate that find double integral over the region r you know now does that make sense well basically it does because if this gives us the elevation at a certain point this will really tell us whether it will give us the sum of all the elevation whether we're going up in the mountains in which case will be a positive value or whether we're going to the caves in which case will be a negative value okay but then if you want to look at the problem you know okay just look at the problem is finding the double integral of x times y squared over the region r so you know it's one of the more difficult problems okay and we're gonna go right to it okay so now, what we want to do, well, our region R is very important. Remember, we always want to, you know, find the limits for region R. The function is x plus y squared, quite an elementary function. So we may not need to reverse the order of integration. And we are not graphing out here because the area of concern is the region R, which is over here like that. All right, so as you can see, it's quite complicated, but it's okay. With our normal methods, we are, should be able to find the limits. Now, what we want to do first is find the points of intersection. The point over here is minus 2 and the point over here is 1 right now why do we need all this you know intersecting points well basically because when we define the limits if you were to notice carefully you know if there are intersecting points inside the the limits that we have so we really need to redefine the limit because if we cross over an intersecting point we're going to use different curves you see why very soon so we have a uh, minus 1 divided by root 2 and we got 1 divided by root 2 okay so far so good now step number two is to set up the limits. Okay, so region R is this thing over here as you can see. Now, um, we're going to use a type 1 approach. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, we are going to draw a horizontal line. Oh, sorry, I draw a vertical line. We're going to go down, okay, find a curve that's at the bottom and then go up, find a curve that is at the top. All right, now, like I said again, there's an intersecting point over here. So what students tend to do is that they tend to just have the endpoints of x minus, minus 2 and minus 1. Well, that's certainly not the case because if you notice, this region is not in region R, okay? This region is not in region R. So what we essentially have to do, we need to divide the region R into three sub-regions, if one may call it, R1, R2, R3. R1, R2, and R3. Okay, this is of vital importance because one way to look at it, if you were to just maybe, um, you know, draw a line like this, just imagine a line like that, right? Okay, the two curves, the two y curves are basically this curve right here and this curve right here. However, when I cross over this intersecting point, notice that the, the limits of the curves, um, of the y curves or the curves in terms of x has changed. The top one has stayed the same, but the bottom one now changes to y equals to half. That's why, you know, we need separate regions, you know, the regions are not the same if we, you know, just go through, um, you know, one sweep like that. Then we go all the way here, okay, and then, you know, when we come to the point over here, again, the endpoints has changed to y equals to x squared as opposed to y equals to half, okay, and most importantly, goal is important, so we want to, you know, find the, the right calculations, you know, we cannot make a mistake. So let's set up the limits. All right, R1. Um, I would just say uh, the double integral of the function um, x, y squared, d, x, sorry, uh, yeah, no, d, y, d, x, because we are integrating first with respect to y of r, can be subdivided into r1, okay, uh, plus r2, plus r3, okay? So, you know, it's vital importance that, you know, we define these areas correctly. Now, what is r1? 
Okay, so the double integral of y equals to x squared dy dx. Let's see what we have. R1 is basically this small region over here. Now, think of the vertical line, go down. What is the, the, the curve at the bottom? The curve at the bottom is x squared, right? Now, when we go up, what's the curve at the top? The curve at the top is minus x plus 2. What are the x endpoints? They are also different, okay? It's not like this now. We're just focusing on R1. So it's this small portion over here. Now, it's basically minus 2 and minus 1 divided by root 2. Okay, and the function stays the same. The function does not change. So that is R1. Okay, next, what is R2? R2 is the bigger portion, so as you can see right here, we think of the vertical line, we go down, what we hit is that we hit the curve, oh sorry, yeah, we hit the curve of the line y equals to half. So the bottom one is going to be half, and then when we go to the top, it's going to be minus x plus 2. The endpoints also has changed to minus 1 divided by root 2 and 1 divided by root 2. And the function stays the same, dy dx. All right. Um, just briefly speaking, as you can already see that these two limits are different, okay? Now, the top one is the same, because why? Well, the top one basically, you know, is the same common to both um, R1 and R2, but the bottom one is different. This one is x squared, this one is half, okay? So then now, I hope you can see why we need to subdivide into R1, R2, R3. Okay, the next one, okay, what we have, well, plus, um, is this R3 over here, is this, it goes back to x squared as the bottom one, and what's the top one? The top one is minus x plus 2. Okay, and now we're going for 1 divided by root 2, 2, 1. Okay, and it's x, x squared, dx. Uh, sorry, yeah, dy, dx. And there we go. We have already uh, managed to break down or decompose r into the three subregions r1, r1 over here, r2, and r3. Okay, uh, sorry, this is going to be r. Okay. And once we do that, okay, we can already apply the formula for the iota integrals. Now, I know that it kind of seems very difficult to do the integration, but nonetheless, I will do one for you. With respect to y, so whole x constant, right? So what we get, we've got integrate, the same thing. And then if we hold x constant, we get 1 divided by 3, x, y, uh, to the power of 3, and we're going to put in the limits as half, and x plus 2, and it's a dx now. Okay, now remember... Since we are partially integrated with respect to y, we are putting the limits into where y is, okay, which is basically y to the power of 3. This function is in terms of x, and you know, we are going to integrate this with res uh, in terms of x with respect to x, put in the limits, you know, and we get a certain number. Well, what does, what's the number that we get? The number that we get is minus 41 root 2 divided by 60. Alright, so like I said, you know, if you do, if you substitute the limits properly, you find region R, you know, the limits of region R, substitute the limits properly, partially integrate that in the correct order, you will, everything will fall into place. So what this, what does this tell us? This tells us that the elevation, okay, for region R, the total elevation, okay, or if one may say, the total volume that is below the sea level is going to be 41 times root 2 divided by 60. Well, why do I say that? Well, it's because of a negative sign. Remember, the double integral gives us the net signed volume. The sign is important. So, what I can write here is minus 41 root 2 divided by 60. Okay, so now we got um, R1 and R3 left, and I'm not going to do um, the, the steps in its entirety because it's quite long. But what I can just say is that R1 plus R2, oh, sorry, R1 plus R3, right? Okay, R1 plus R3, that would certainly gives us this number, something like that. 41, root 2, 60, minus um, 603, divided by 40, okay? So let's see what we have. We got double integral of this function over R1 and R3, which is basically this portion over here, and this portion over here is this number right there. Okay, remember R, the total area, is basically the net sign volume, or the net sign value in this case, which is going to be this subtracted by, sorry, this add up with this, right? But if this is a negative value, so this add up with this, will just simply gives us 603 divided by 40, and it's a negative value. So what does this tell us in our expedition for gold? This tells us that the total, the total volume, okay, for this region R, now it's the entire region because I added a 1, R1, R2, and R3 is going to be a negative value, right? So considering that we're hunting for gold, it's going to be a negative value, it would certainly mean that we're going to a cave, right? Which is why I got my head on. But what does that also mean? That will also mean that we will need a crane more than we need the rope. Okay, we may need rope when we get to the cave. But really, what I just want to try to tell you is that we should really look at the interpretations of the F 
um, x in terms of x and y. Now, in this case, f in terms of x and y gives us the elevation c level. So, you know, we know that, you know, in this area r, that we're probably defined, probably set up the limits. We're going into a place that is below the sea level. And what do we need? We need cranes so that we can dig the ground and so that, you know, we can find this thing that we want called gold. Because the mathematics tells us that it's a negative sign value. Okay, so we're going below sea level. And really, this is an interesting example of the double integral which I would like to share with all of you. Always make sure you get the interpretation correct. You don't want to make any you know, screw-ups in what it means. Somebody, t you say you got a number. My number is minus six, uh, 603 divided by 4, negative. They say, oh, what does it mean? Well, if you say you don't know, that's kind of say that you, know, you don't know what's going on. But if you apply mathematician, if you're a pure mathematician, that may be quite okay. But if you apply, you need to know what's going on. And this is what's going on. This is what is going on. We're going underneath sea level. Okay, so this is an example of how the double integral can be used for useful purposes, like finding gold. Thank you.